think it's amazing how Nintendo has managed to make boring mechanics that are present in many modern AAA games more enjoyable. And with Tears of the Kingdom, crafting has now received the fun treatment thanks to abilities like Fuse and Ultra Hand. So instead of holding down a button while an animation plays out, you now use your imagination to come up with wildly different solutions depending on the situation. A maid a fire-breathing penis. A lot of games have this thing where they incorporate as many mechanics into their world as possible. Not because it adds to the experience, but because it just ticks a box. Things like platforming in narrative games, ranged combat in souls likes, dating sims in a first-person shooter and crafting in basically everything. It's okay to give the player options with different systems, but when you don't build your game around those systems, it just feels like a stale mechanic. And you know what? I get it. There's a reason why Minecraft is so, so, so successful and everyone wants a piece of the action. But guys, the game is called Minecraft. It's centered around crafting. With Tears of the Kingdom, it just feels like crafting has been revived and that too in a way that encourages players to experiment with three different things. Combat, traversal, and general problem solving. Let's start with combat. Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite game of all time and one of the most popular criticisms of it was that weapons should not have to break. Even though the purpose of that very mechanic was so that you didn't always approach an encounter with melee combat. With the sequel, you're given even worse, bare bones, what the fuck do I do with this shit kind of equipment. But behold, the fuse ability. And now you're approaching every encounter differently solely because of the fact that you can make whatever weapons you want. A stick and a rock, I now have an axe. A stick and a spike ball, I have a mace. A rod and a three-pronged horn from a bokoblin, I have a spear. And the possibilities only extend from there. Having your weapons break is no longer an obstacle, but an opportunity to see what you can come up with next. In other modern AAA games, combat crafting can be extremely intrusive and problematic. It makes sense in survival horror games like The Last of Us or Resident Evil. I'm supposed to be low on resources. It adds to the survival aspect and therefore, I'm actually pretty fucking happy to see materials scattered throughout because I can craft them into something that will help me. But in games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden West, being low on resources required to make specific ammo types not only puts me at a disadvantage, now I have to walk away from an encounter because I don't have the elemental advantage to kill the fucking Thunderjaw, the Tremor Tusk, the Slither Fang. In Tears of the Kingdom, I'm like, oh shit, my weapon broke. Time to bring out the big guns. Three days later. The fuck you looking at? You know how gamers have this goblin mentality where they stock up on consumables and never use them? Personally, I hoard and hoard and hoard in games like Fallout 4 or Red Dead Redemption 2 or Elden Ring. And before I know it, the credits roll and I have all these things I never bothered using because the situation never fucking called for it. Even Breath of the Wild, my pockets were stuffed with things like Keese eyeballs and Keese wings and Choo Choo jelly and monster parts because I didn't really need them. So Nintendo goes, okay, we'll just give these excess items effects then and you can use Fuse to join them with other things. Now an eyeball combined with my arrows home in on a target. Choo choo jelly or a specific kind of fruit coat them with an element. These glow in the dark seeds allow me to light up super dark places and I not only have the incentive to hoard but to experiment. What happens if I combine my arrows with these mushrooms? What happens if I put a precious stone on my sword? Can I turn my shield into more than just a defensive piece of equipment? Oh baby. The next thing I want to talk about is traversal. By now, every developer and their mother has adopted the glider, the mount, climbing, and you know, it's just been there, done that. So what's next? Banjo, Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts, ladies and gentlemen. As if the sandbox style, what if I do this approach in Breath of the Wild wasn't fulfilling enough, you now have all these Zonai thingamabobs that have various functions. You have a fan, a mini hot air balloon, a wheel, a rocket, something that literally just stands upright. And what it does is create these situations where you're like, okay, I have to cross this river. What is the solution? You chop down trees to build a raft. You use Ultra Hand to stick them together and then place a fan on top. Boom. I have a boat now. Here's a wing glider. Here are some fans. I now have some sort of makeshift plane. And the possibilities extend from there. You are constantly innovating, constantly thinking, if I can do this, does that mean I can do this? And what happens is now you have this whole game centered around the idea of crafting. It's no wonder reviewers have spent a hundred plus hours on this game and barely scratched the surface. Crafting is just one big mini game and I find myself endlessly spending time figuring out what bullshit I can come up with. The internet has gone absolutely crazy with some of their creations and gamers are constantly testing the limits of what's possible, what's feasible and what
the fuck is that? Problem solving is where I think Tears of the Kingdom stands out the most. By now, you've probably seen those clips where players are urged to cross these rail lines with a hook and a piece of wood, but are instead building the motherfucking Golden Gate Bridge because they can. You don't always have to do what's conventional, because what's unconventional is a solution you came up with. This one time I was in the shrine where a ball kept rolling off a ramp, and I looked at it like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? There were three stakes and two pieces of wood and a target I clearly had to hit. For 20 minutes, I kept trying to figure out what the fuck could these stakes were supposed to be doing until I realized, hold on, this is just an oversimplified game of pinball. And when I solved it, it felt really fucking cool. It was personal. Like, I used my monkey brain to figure out how to get this thing to work. That's the thing about crafting. It should achieve a personal touch rather than restrict you to a blueprint that you have to follow. In Breath of the Wild, the simple act of cooking was so much fun because you tossed in a bunch of ingredients into a pod, listened for the jingle to see whether you made something good or fucking disgusting. Tears of the Kingdom expanded it upon that concept and applied it to its entire physics engine. A lot of developers say play your own way or that every playthrough is different, but let's be honest. You gave me colorful armor, you gave me the option to pick inconsequential dialogue choices, or you let me decorate a space differently. I mean, sure, in farming games or casual games, it's personal because the game is centered around how you set up your space. But in adventure games like these, there's probably very few titles that manage to achieve the immersion of crafting. And Tears of the Kingdom has managed to once again set a bar for itself. If open world games were here and Breath of the Wild was here, then Tears of the Kingdom is here. Why? Hadouken!